today's video is a super fun one because it's all about plants where we're going to check out a couple of uh, nurseries um, both Andy and I have been sort of purging through our uh, plant collection because it's now we're entering fall or we're already in fall actually and we're you know really looking at what uh, varietals we need to replace in our collection and also you know if there's something out there that's really unique that we want to also add um, so I'm really looking forward to our uh, journey today and I have no idea whether or not we're actually gonna find anything but that's part of the fun before I take you out there I'll show you my current jungle and give you a sense of the types of plants that I currently have already in my collection and what I may be looking for. So first let's head into my kitchen. Um, and I, it's, it's full of plants in here, so be warned. <music> So I have just picked up Andy Hola. <laughs> and we are headed out to a couple places in Langley to check out some plants. So let's go. have uh, been to two places out here in Langley. Uh, first is was Cedar Rib Nursery and um, we just finished at Plant Junkie and I feel like uh, after what we've been out here now for almost two hours uh, I feel like we've done a fair bit of damage to our wallets. <laughs> what do you think?
back home from my road trip out to Langley and let's take a look at my big plant haul. I did uh, manage to pick up a fair number of plants while out there, so let's take a look. So this first plant that I want to show you is called the Philo Birkin. Um, it's a rare and gorgeous um, house plant with dark green leaves, as you can see. Uh, it's a member of the philodendron family, and so it's the same family as the Monstera. And uh, check out the leaves here. I wanted to show you this particular leaf. How stunning is that? Um, and the, just their variegation is so interesting. Um, and this particular uh, varietal, uh, the, this Philo Birkin, it likes bright and indirect light. I picked up this is, I need to take this down. This is called a Decidia. Um, and in a way, it kind of reminds me of a Kokodima, which is a Japanese moss ball. Um, but it's a trailing type of plant, as you can see. It trails um, and it can thrive in either a, a pot or just kind of tied up together like this. And it's um, exposed and hanging. So, uh, you know, you just basically give it a good soak and you're good to go for about a week. And it likes medium to bright light. Okay, third plant in our haul is this beautiful Hoya Curtisi. Um, This is a type of plant that is super easy to grow and also great for small spaces because the leaves are so tiny, as you can see, you know, um, just by comparing to the scale, the size of my thumb. Um, the leaves have this gorgeous silver variegation to it. They're shaped like um, an, a, a spade, so ma which makes it really interesting. It likes it warm and humid with bright and uh, indirect light. And yeah, again, very beautiful and super easy to grow. Next, we have the boat lily. Um, this particular plant is really used mo mainly outside, um, outdoors in um, uh, these flower beds and rock gardens that you might see. Um, but you can also have it as a house plant because it's just got this beautiful purple and green foliage. Uh, it typically likes full sun. Um, so I'm not quite sure how it'll thrive now that fall has started. This gorgeous plant is called the um, Alganema Pink Moon. It's also known as a Chinese evergreen. And um, this particular plant is great for uh, low light conditions, which is going to be awesome for fall and super easy to care for. And, you know, really the color of this plant is what makes it stand out. You can see there's like these beautiful pink stripes um, and some white dots along the striations, along the leaves. It's just such a unique, overall unique plant. Um, and it's also quite highly coveted because of the design of the leaves. Um, one note about this plant is that it tends to grow fairly slowly, although there's already some new leaves popping out. So I'm not sure whether this was just, you know, an anomaly uh, that when it came from the nursery, but we'll see. Okay, this plant I was dying over um, at Cedar Tree Nursery in Langley. Um, this is called the Sansevieria Night Owl. Um, I'm a I'm a fan of Sansevierias. This particular one I love because it's got this sort of silvery sage um, color to its leaves. Uh, it's a super easy plant to grow and take care of, and. It's known as a lot of Sansevierias are to purify air and it likes uh, direct, indirect, I'm sorry, indirect light and uh, a very little watering. In fact, it really only needs like watering once a month. So super easy to take care of, beautiful plant that purifies your air. Now I've got two more here. Um, this one is called the Peperomia clusifolia and also known as the baby rubber plant. So it's a type of succulent that produces these kind of uh, oval shaped leaves that they kind of come to a point here. It's a fairly compact plant and again, very slow growing. It typically only grows to about six or seven inches. So I don't anticipate it's going to grow much bigger than it already is. Now, last but not least, this is the bird's nest fern. Um, it has air purifying properties and 
itself it likes very warm like humid um and warm environments plus you know sufficient light so uh if your house tends to be more dry like you'll want to mist this plant or um kind of like place it next to a humidifier um just so that it's you know uh fairly moist um it's in a fairly moist environment regularly so it's it's a very cool plant though if you go look inside just the layering and the curling of the leaves it's just really unique so that's all i got um that's my haul for this particular road trip with andy hope you guys had fun because we certainly did um and i hope it also gave you a glimpse of the types of plants that i tend to look for when i'm out there now and so moving forward, you know, if you have any questions about plants in general, if you have questions about, you know, what types of plants to get started with, with your collection, feel free to DM me or email me. I will love um, hearing from you and also responding and just chatting about plants in general. It's just something I love. So um, feel free to reach out. But in the meantime, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one.